Hi everyone. So today we're going to be building our game state manager. Um, I thought this would be a good next topic as the class file we've been working with, just the application, has been getting moderately bloated. Uh, we haven't really done much, but it's starting to get big enough that we really need to outsource some of this stuff and kind of keep things confined into a neater project setup. So uh, to start, I'll kind of show you some of the small modifications I made prior to this video. Um, if you'll notice, there's this game information, uh, kind of like our title, our view width, our view height. This is kind of a common thing that a lot of people do. Um, they keep it in their application so they don't have to change it anywhere else uh, as the application class is pretty easily accessible. Um, and the reason I made those is so I don't have to go into my desktop launcher uh, every time to change the title or the view width or the view height. I can just go to my application and stay in my core module here uh, and never have to touch that stuff. Uh, so these are kind of nice to set up. Um, and if you'll also notice, I commented out some of the logic, like the core game stuff we had set up from the previous few videos. Um, and I did that on the render, you'll see here, if uh, you need some time to get an idea of what I commented out, you can pause the video. Um, in the resize, I also commented out that. The update, I commented out this stuff. However, I'm saving it because we're just going to be exporting it into a game state. And this stuff just isn't used anymore, so no reason to comment it out. Um, so let's see. I first will want to create two new packages. Uh, we have our game state manager. Oh, I'm sorry. That is not what I was looking for. We want our managers package. Um, and then we'll also want to create a package for our game states. Um, now we're starting to see some structure happen. Uh, for our managers, that's where we're going to be putting our game state manager, our camera manager, our asset manager, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then our states are essentially where all our gameplay states will be. You don't necessarily want to overdo it with how many states you make. Um, as that's not really what they're meant for. Um, it's mostly just to keep it simple. Each state has its own kind of function. So essentially you'll just want like a splash screen state, very simple, a loading state. So you can kind of have a progress bar in the beginning or something, some kind of fancy setup. And then a main menu state and a gameplay state. And now you can kind of have other states for like a high score list. Essentially they're just going to be screens. and. Um, so let's create our game state manager class. This is uh, kind of a big class we'll want to treat very well as it's going to be the backbone to the structure of our project now. Uh, seeing as it will control the way the game states are loaded and handled and whether they're disposed or removed or kept in memory, um, you'll want to be kind of thoughtful about how you're treating the game states. and. Another thing I should mention is this game state manager that we're going to be creating today is kind of going to not have all the functionality uh, as most pre-built game state managers, such as the scene and game states that are built into the framework of libgdx. Uh, they are literally titled scene um, and game classes. Uh, and that, those kind of allow you to have transitions. I will be covering those uh, so you can kind of get an idea of how transitions work and what they look like and how you can implement them with scenes. However, with this game state manager, it's going to be simple. You might have to hard code transitions or you might have to code in your own functionality for it to handle transitions in the game state manager to make it aware that you want to transition in a special way. Um, so let's get started real quick. Uh, first off, we kind of, it, it'd be nice to keep a uh, reference to our main application class. That way if we need to get our sprite bash or our camera or um, any kind of information from here, 
uh, we'll be able to easily access that information because our game state manager is going to pass that reference down to our game states. Um, so that will be a private final application app. Okay, just import that real quick. And then we're also going to want a container for our game states, uh, some kind of data model that we can manage. Um, so we'll just use a stack for now. Um, could be an array list, could be a queue, doesn't really matter. It's all about how you want it to function. Um, but as I said, do be mindful of how you're handling them. If you keep too many states in memory, you're, you might experience some lag due to the resources that are being used um, by all the states. Uh, and you'll kind of notice how it'll function once we get this thing built up in the final few videos. Um, so we're just going to put game state here as the tag. We will be making a game state class um, that'll allow us to have some polymorphism uh, to have different game states and basic functionality. So now what I like to do is create an enumerator uh, for all the different kind of states. So we're going to have a splash state for now. Um, that'll be our only one. Maybe, you know, just to show transition main menu state as well. Um, and then the constructor, game state manager, uh, we're going to want it to take in an application for our application reference equals app. And then this dot states equal um, new stack game state. And that'll be it for that because we don't really have any other functionality set up yet. So what we're going to do for the game state manager is it's going to kind of take everything from the application and wrap around these functions such as render, resize, dispose, and update. And if you remember also, we created our own update method, so we might as well just outsource an actual uh, update method for it to be able to call. Um, and that'll be nice so we can keep track of the logic code and keep it separate from the render code. Uh, that, that breakdown just really makes it easier to focus on which is which instead of having it just like, oh, we know the logic codes on top so we'll just look on top because you could accidentally slip something into the render code and not know to look there. So we're just going to keep them strictly separate by having an update method. So float delta because we do want the delta time for that. Um, public void render uh, public void dispose. Now this is going to be a special kind of dispose class or dispose method because if we're disposing the game state manager, uh, we'll want to just dispose all the states that it currently has and then clear it out. Um, and that's kind of when the game is over and destroyed um, here. So let's continue on. Um, oh, also we do want to or have the ability to ask for that application reference. So application, uh, yeah, we'll just call that return app. Um, what else? So we have, oh, we need the resize. So public void resize. Um, and so I think that's kind of the core or four methods you're going to want to have. Um, so now let's get into actually having a few methods that will allow us to set the state and uh, get the state so we know like what ins or state instance we want. Um, so we'll have public void set state and that'll take in a state um, and we'll have public Game, or you know what, this should be private. Um, game state, get state, okay, and then we'll just return 
null for now because we haven't really made any game states. We haven't even made our game state class yet. Um, so set state is going to either retain a few states or for the time being, we're just gonna have it simple and only retain one state at a time. So states dot pop um, why can't I do that? Uh, is that not a stack? Let's see, what's going on here? Um, you know what? I think it's just complaining because I don't have that game state class. So we'll just throw that in there. That will be abstract. Um, do, do note that. And we're going to want to import that. And then, oh, okay, yeah, so stack wasn't imported, that's why. Um, so now I can do states.pop.dispose, because we do want to dispose um, each and every game state upon releasing it. So it can release those resources, those textures, and kind of anything else it has tied to it. Um, so then we do states.push. Uh, get state state okay simple enough um, and then states dot peak dot resize uh, and that's gonna take ant width ant height then I'll just pass it down dispose is going to like I said dispose of every single game state that it currently has on it um, or that it's currently managing. So gs.dispose and then states.clear. Render uh, states.peak. Render states.peak.update with the delta. You can kind of see these similarities, this waterfall effect. Um, this will allow us to keep our code nice and clean. Um, okay, so I think that's all the basic functionality we're looking to get out of this one. Uh, this dot set state splash screen. Okay, so you'll want to do this when the game is first instantiated um, so you can have an initial state loaded. Uh, so always request the splash screen first. Um, and now let's move back to our application class and start adding in that game state manager. Um, so we're gonna wanna keep our camera and our batch uh, just for the purpose of being able to recycle them or reuse them throughout our game. Uh, that's because you don't necessarily need any new instance of each one for each new state. That's kind of overdoing it. There's no need for that. And, that can get kind of heavy on your resource management again. Um, and because they really just work with whatever context they're put into. So it's just smart to only have one instance of those. That's why we'll keep them in the main application class um, along with anything else that will be the kind of one instance uh, such as our game state manager. So we're gonna have the private game state manager and we'll just call that GSM. We're going to want to import that. And then GSM equals new game state manager. And because it requests the application, we give it this, which is this class. Um, and then because we separated the logic code from the render, we always update first. Uh, GDX graphs get delta time. We always want to uh, modify our math by, or I'm sorry, we always want to multiply our math by the delta time so we make sure to keep a consistent frame rate and consistent frame modification uh, to our positioning and speeds um, just to keep it all in sync. And then gsm.render. And that's all you really need to do for the render method. And then for the resize, it's going to be gsm.resize int uh, width divided by our scale, so we'll kind of pass that down to it. Um, width, or I'm sorry, that's height divided by scale, 
And the reason we uh, are going to be doing the scale modification here on the top level is because then when we get down to our game state, we can just pass the width and height, and we don't have to do anything fancy for it because um, we already did the modification on this top level. So um, dispose, we're going to want to dispose the GSM first, and then dispose the batch, and that's all we really need to do for that. And um, I'm not going to run it now because we haven't really made our game states yet to work with. Um, but you can kind of see the structure here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit nicer to work with uh, because we have, as I said, the waterfall effect of methods. Um, we can outsource a lot of this logic code. And you can already tell like how much smaller this file is going to be. Um, it'll essentially stop here. It'll cut out another 50 or so lines, um, which is really nice. It keeps the code clean. And so with that, I'm going to stop the video here uh, just to keep it concise for just the game state manager class. Um, and again, if you need to review something, I'm kind of scrolling through here and you can pause. Um, but if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. Let me know if uh, you'd like to see any kind of modifications. Again, this won't have any decent, uh, I'd say, functionality for transitions, but I might figure out a way to work those in later. It's really not too hard, um, because for the time being, we're just going to do some hard-coded fade to black and fade out of black transitions. All right, so with that, I'll leave you with this uh, to kind of think about, and then we'll move on to the game states in the next video. Thank you for watching.